Hey, welcome back to our channel, you guys. My name is Gary, if you guys don't know. Today we're gonna give you guys a chicken and rooster update and see how they've been doing for the last three days while we were gone actually helping out a fellow homesteader. So come along with us while we give you guys a chicken update and tell you what's going on with our flock. Alrighty you guys, so the first birds that we're going to check up on are our quarantine birds. We actually integrated them last night. All right, good night chickens. But we're gonna check up on them and see how they are and just see what's going on. I don't see them in here in the actual coop or anything. I have a feeling that they're in the hen house. Hen house. <laughs> they give us fresh eggs daily. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. So here they are. We have our feather foot over here. She went broodery. So we've just been letting her do her thing. We're gonna try to let nature take its course and see what happens. But our quarantine birds, you can see these guys. They're just hanging out. The other ones ran out the hole. So they are doing nice outside. This one, you can see the backside where the feathers are sort of different from the tail end to the complete backside of it or whatnot. But those feathers in the middle where she healed, they're very tiny, but they cover the skin and make it to where it's not noticeable to all the other chickens. So perfect healed for her. They are nice and happy. All the feathers on all the birds are pretty much like that. They're nice and happy. They're out of that small little coop area. So let's go inside and see what's going on inside the coop itself and Tell you what else has been happening over the three days. I gotta get used to that. So, we are inside the coop itself. You can see all the birds running around having a good time. So they are nice and happy, they're eating, they're doing good. The stupid thing that I tripped over right here. There's a safety precaution now for the birds. The tractor supply birds now. We had some incidents on the homestead, unfortunately. When we were gone for three days, we ended up finding out that these little guys love to dig next to the door a lot more than we would like. It's very sad, it's very unfortunate. Fro was part of that. Uh, we were thinking about naming them all sorts of different names and trying to give them a name and I feel like that's sort of how it goes. Very, very sad. The outside itself, there wasn't any notice that a dog dug in. There was like barely any crack or anything else like that to where that bird like literally wiggled its way out there. There was no claw marks or anything like else like that. We investigated everywhere and that's what it was. So I cut out this four by four that was split and everything from our patio and I nailed it into the floor. So the 4x4 four four itself will uh, allow it to where no matter what, there's no way that they're going to dig any which way this way and they can't get outside of the door. So let's go and show you guys the reinforcements on the outside so that way the dogs can't get in, they can't get out. Underneath the door, I actually have a concrete bag that actually uh, got soaked and cured inside the bag. So I figured out, hey, this will be a perfect spot for it. I put it right there. <laughs> and then not only that, I have a uh, concrete and then rocks and everything else over on this side that uh, I had from other pillars and everything from when I built the patio. 
But yep, that's that. That makes it to where the dogs can't dig in or the chickens can't dig out. And then I've got chicken wire underneath the ground. I've got that all the way around. It's just right here at this spot. That was the weak spot. So. so we've checked up on all the birds. The quarantine birds itself that we brought out here, those are the birds that we incubated. Try to integrate them at six weeks. The bigger hen pumped them and uh, yeah. So we had to quarantine them and now we've introduced them. They're back in the coop house itself. They're not getting really bothered by any of the hens or anything like that. They seem like they're perfectly fine. They were getting punted immediately last time, even in the hen house. So nighttime integration is the way to go. Uh, thank you so much, Moses. I can't believe, you know, how well it's worked both times. Everything that we've read is six weeks. So if you're reading that and you think just six weeks, put them in at night inside the actual hen house, and that is the way to go. All right, so how are we able to leave our homestead for three days and have our animals be fine and as well as our even dogs itself? We have automatic feeders. We have a two inch pipe. I have a two inch cap on the top so that way water can't get in there. And you can make it as any length you really want itself. And then you have a two inch uh, receiver down there where it's basically a three way. I have a male at the bottom with a cap so that way I can clean it out. So the slip on cap just like this at the bottom, slip on cap at the top. If I need to, I can clean it, make it, take it all apart very easily and have a good go. We filled these things up all the way. We filled up the tray down there. They're good to go. For the watering itself, I have an automatic watering system. I actually have one pipe that feeds this side of the coop as well as that side of the coop for the turkeys and the one rooster. <laughs> But we have the two cups on this side, two cups on this side. The thing with, with chickens is if you have constant food, constant water, they're not fighting each other, they're not pecking at each other, they're not trying to compete for whatever it is. They have food anytime they want, they have water whenever they want, and they're good to go. The automatic feeders and automatic waters do save your hands to be a lot more docile, I find. But, hey, they've got... They've got water, they've got food all the time. We've got this three quarter inch pipe run along and it feeds both sides, like I said, and it hooks up to one 55 gallon tub. And I will take you outside, I'll show you that setup. All right, so our 55 gallon drum is all hooked up to PVC pipe. The object is to try to get a foot coming out and then two feet down and then you can go out whatever and you'll have a good pressure for the whole piece. So you come out a foot roughly and I think that's probably about eight inches. Come down two feet and that drop right there gets you the pressure. You go out and that's what runs all the lines to where they have water inside. It would last for right around about two weeks out here in the summer and in the sun. So desert this is the way to go. Two weeks of water that you just 55 gallons, and you know that will last you about two weeks. So the turkeys, I don't really have any update. They're perfectly fine. They're good in gobbling and the rooster is perfectly fine. But let's take you over to our roosters and give you guys an update over there. All right, so over here in our nursery in our Green Mile area, we have the feeding and the watering system set up this same exact way. Go figure, right? <laughs> in the nursery itself we have two different spots and we're not going to bore you guys with what's in there or anything else like that because it's empty but we have a build as well as a chick video and a playlist up here on the side so definitely check that out if you can later on or whatnot it's basically the same exact system that we have over at the hen house and for the turkey house itself we have a 35 gallon barrel instead of the 55 gallon barrel we have it going through the nursery and then into the green mile so Let's go and check on these roosters in the Green Mile and show you what's going on in there. So as you guys can see, we only have two roosters instead of the three that we had before. So we only have two demos. Um, <laughs> the other rooster itself, we ended up giving over to Blissful Acres. They didn't have any roosters, they only had hens. They actually have six hens there. So they wanted to get some fertile eggs, try to let them go natural and do all their things that they needed to do. 
or they might even incubate some eggs who knows but uh, we ended up giving them a rooster itself we don't really know whether or not we're going to keep one of these guys and bring mr red over here when we first got the roosters itself we ended up throwing them all in the hen house and mr red is the one that all the hens decide that's their mate these right here they have plenty of uh, pluses if we do keep one of them they lay a lot of eggs they're very docile they're pretty loud um, unfortunately <laughs> but there are plenty of uh, benefits with them Rhode Island Reds do have their own bipolar attitudes itself so we don't know what we're gonna do exactly um, drop a comment down below if you guys have a comment on what we should do with our roosters if we should keep these or we should keep the or keep one of these or keep the Rhode Island Red It'll also be up to the lady hens as well. If we get one of these guys in there and they ain't having it, it it's just not going to happen, folks. So that's pretty much our update for you guys on our flock. I hope you guys like this kind of content. If you did, hit that thumbs up. I'm really hoping that the rooster that we gave, Blissful Acres, is going to be a really good producer for them. And they're going to be able to have wonderful years with them and everything like that. I'm really sad about Mr. Fro and everything like that, but it's just... The way of homesteading, unfortunately, you learn a lot of lessons and you find out a lot of little things. It sucks. I'm not no professional. We're not no professionals. Uh, we're definitely just vlogging our life and bringing you guys along with us. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this content itself, this update, keeping you guys in the loop, trying to keep it as real as possible. Uh, subscribe if you guys like us. Stay tuned. The next video that we're going to have come out is the garden update. Everything's starting to pop out. I'm really happy with the garden and how it's going and the expansion that we've done and everything like that so definitely check that out as well as later on in the week we're going to have a update coming out with what's been going over the last weekend with the homestead meetup for blissful acres and helping them out fencing off those 7.9 acres um, <laughs> it was a wonderful wonderful time out there so definitely stay tuned for that so i'll catch you guys on the next one and i hope you guys have a good one later later